With recent polls suggesting Democrats are actually narrowing the gap with some Republicans, party officials say they still have their work cut out for them, and that includes working class voters. There's a new poll out from the Associated Press that shows white voters without four-year college degrees prefer Republicans over Democrats. Get that. 58 to 36 percent, 22 point difference. Let's bring in uh, Mary Kay Henry into the conversation. She's president of one of the nation's largest unions, the SEIU, the Service Employees International Union. Uh, Mary Kay, this is such a total shift for unions, for working class Americans to see those kinds of numbers. What do you make of it? Well, Chris, I think that working class Americans are looking at the moment that we're in and confronting the crisis for working people and are going to face a very clear choice on November 2nd. And I'm really confident that people are going to begin to examine who stands on the side of building the middle class and who stands on the side of corporate But what interests. gives you that confidence? Because we're getting down to the wire here and you look at those numbers and frankly, they're pretty shocking. That's a huge gap, a huge gap. And these these are the folks not only who traditionally went to the polls, these were the folks who you folks in the unions got out to help get out the vote. They were instrumental in a lot of Democratic victories all through the years. Well, I'm confident because I think people are very frustrated and angry at a moment where corporations are clearly taking advantage of people's fear about 25 million working people not being able to find a job in this country. And as the debate sharpens and the contrast becomes clear, I'm confident that working people are going to want candidates, elected officials that help get America back to work. Yeah, there's another uh, big group of voters that are going to potentially be key, and there's a new poll from the Pew Hispanic Center. It finds that Hispanic voters are solidly with the Democrats, but again, this big enthusiasm gap. Uh, only 51% of registered Latino voters say they're certain to vote next month. And then I know that your union is uh, going after California gubernatorial candidate Meg Whitman, appealing to Hispanic voters. How critical is it and what can you do again in less than four weeks to get that vote out for the Democrats? We have thousands of members all across this country reaching out in Latino communities and helping our members and their neighbors and families understand that there is a key choice that that community faces November 2nd. We need to fix our broken immigration system. We need to get elected officials that are willing to stand up and make sure 11 million workers have equal rights with the rest of us in getting America's so economy going again. So that's your message, again. but how do you get it across and how do you translate that into getting people to the polls? We have thousands of members who've taken time off the job. They're recruiting thousands more volunteers. We are on the phones. We are door knocking in neighborhoods. We are speaking at our churches. We're doing everything we can to make it crystal clear that we face an incredible choice November 2nd because middle class America is being hurt and we want to stand up and speak out and get our elected officials to stand with us and call corporate America back to the table to share our responsibility. I want to get this in real quickly because I think the enthusiasm gap, we hear a lot about it, we see a lot of polls, uh, and I want to get your take on it. Where do you think we're going to be come Election Day? Or, I mean, we have to understand the fact that now a pretty significant number of Americans vote early, too, so right. we may not have until the first week in November. Well, Chris, I, th I think we just heard, uh, respectfully, one of the reasons why so many working class Americans are going to vote Republican. We didn't hear anything about how we're going to create jobs or the fact that it's the entrepreneur and the small business person does that. It was anti-corporate rhetoric at a time when we have the highest number of Americans on food stamps ever. The American people are not dumb. They know that when you demonize those who create jobs, you're going to have fewer jobs. When you raise their taxes, when you put fines and penalties on top of them, the jobs are going to stop being created. And what she just said, I think, is right. We're facing an, an incredibly important election. We did two years ago, and we made the wrong choice. And I think the American American people are looking two years later and saying, my goodness, this is what is not the change we wanted, uh, and we have to do uh, put in place people who are going to help create jobs and opportunity. Yeah, you know, I think, it's Governor, when you were uh, in leading in New York, you brought together hospitals and mm -hmm. workers to help expand coverage for Absolutely. adults and children. And I think in this moment, we have an experience where corporate America is taking advantage of middle class fears. I just met with why, workers why in Pennsylvania. 
how are, how are they doing that? You, Express tell me. Scripts is a corporation that has gone after us and said that they are going to move their company. 900 people are going to lose their jobs unless they give wage cuts, page for insurance, and give up their pensions. And they're making money. There's the highest exec comp bonus as ever. And so we think something's wrong with an economy where those kind of uh, corporate decisions can be made in the midst of the biggest crisis for working well, we, people. Well, we know something's wrong with our economy, but I don't think it's the failure of, uh, of companies, if they're making money, to want to hire more workers. Uh, they will hire more workers if it's in their interest, but when they're getting hit with higher taxes, w with Obamacare that's going to impose massive new costs on, on employers for each employee, when they have uncertainty as to where what is going to happen when you have a trillion and a half dollar deficit coming out of Washington, they're reluctant to hire, and I understand that. We need to get our economy going, but we're not going to do it with the policies but of Governor, the last two how, years. How can you explain that in the moment of this recession, income inequality is growing, wages are stagnant, corporate profits are up? I am not uh, trying to because, dispute... Because employers are frightened of the economic uh, climate. Small businesses aren't hiring people. I, I have a little small business that I run with one of my partners. We just got hit with a 20% increase in our health care costs for next year, largely because of what's coming out of Washington. And if no, we're thinking that's largely because of insurance companies taking advantage well, of being able to do rate increases before the law goes into effect. Well, we could debate this, but yeah. I, honestly, I honestly think the economy, I do as you want point to out, it. Uh, well, then you should run for office. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm going to represent workers, and we're going to hold elected You're officials accountable. You're going to represent many unemployed workers because the policies of this administration have failed. And, and, and we will have them. more workers, <laughs> more members of your union, if we have a change in the makeup of Congress come this November. I honestly believe You've that. You've been so patient. I'll let you have the last word. <laughs> yeah, I think it's amazing that you're seeing here that the, the, you know, I think I have to hand it to corporate America. They found a way to sort of demand their tax cuts for themselves, regulate, you know, cuts in regulation. They want to be unfettered, and they found a way to get working class people to stand on the side, really, of the top 2%. It's like a hostage situation. They're saying, give us our tax cuts for the top 2%. Get rid of regulation. Let us operate the way we did under the Bush era, the way we did in the 20s. You know, take us back to the Garfield era or else. And that's really the situation that working class people find themselves in. And I think a lot of people are susceptible to the corporate, corporate funded appeals to their fears. You know, the, the white working class well, America and, has and been so trending that way and for I just a while. Wanna, I want a yes and no vote uh, because then we have to go. Given given this anger that's out there, right. are people going to stay home because they're so mad they don't they don't want to well, vote for anybody? Yes or no vote, or are we going to see a high turnout? For this? I think we're going to see probably average turnout for average? a midterm. I think we're going to see a high turnout of those who believe we need to change this administration. All right, Mary Kay. We are getting out of our chairs and getting out of our homes, and we're going to vote. Mary Kay Henry, thank you so much. And uh, Governor Joyanne, great provocative discussion. Thank Thanks you. to both of you. Thank you.